Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be migrating some ARM64 dockers over to AMD64, so let's get started. Now today's video is not gonna be really a tutorial tutorial. This is something I need to do in my environment because I'm running into some CPU bottleneck issues where certain softwares that I can run on my ARM64, like my Raspberry Pi, struggles a lot to run. So instead of running it on the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU, I'd rather run it on a VM or something a little bit stronger so I could get a smoother experience. So there are gonna be a lot of applications like this. If you don't mind the lag, then it's fine. Like I've been using it probably the last two years like this. Now I'm getting to a point where it's starting to struggle and I do need to move certain applications over to AMD64 so I could get more processing out of it. With that being said, this is not really a tutorial. This is just more like what I need to do in my environment to get it upgraded to the next step. So let's jump over to the desktop. All right, so here is a prime example of what I'm talking about. So this installation of Guacamole is actually running off the Raspberry Pi and I am gonna do tiny 11. So it's a VM I have on the server and I'm just going to show you what I mean. So right now I have everything loaded. It's default is just tiny 11. And as I'm moving my mouse, you could see how much it lags. Now, in most cases, I don't really care if I'm not using this as much as I want it to be, but you could see where the struggle is. It's so slow. I'm moving my mouse and it takes forever. And if I go over to my portainer setup, and actually head over to that guacamole and check out the stats. As I move the window, I'm just gonna do this for like about 10 seconds and you can see I, I could barely move it. In most cases, I don't mind because I usually turn off the background and I have everything as low as possible so it does perform okay on the Raspberry Pi 4 using guacamole. But look at the CPU, it's 120% or it keeps going up and up, it struggles. Now I'm gonna use the same VM on another install that I actually have on my x86. So I'm gonna go over to Tiny11. And this is running off an actual computer. And look, I could actually move the windows way much better, even running the same background and all that stuff. You could see it's just moving around. I could open up this, slides open. And that's what I mean by performance issues. The CPU is just so much stronger on this setup than it is on the Raspberry Pi 4 where I can't keep up with certain demands. Now, there's a lot of software in Docker that you could just run on Raspberry Pi, which is fine, like dashboards or snippet programs, stuff that doesn't rely on CPU as much and runs perfectly fine on the Raspberry Pi 4. But anything that requires something like this, graphic intensive or processing power, I'm gonna start moving all those to an AMD64 installation. Now, I can't just do a backup and restore like I normally would on a Docker. The biggest problem I have is the architecture. I'm running this on ARM64 and then the other one I wanna to move to AMD and you can't just do a backup and restore and have it work. So I do have to reinstall the stuff brand new. But luckily for us, if you're using the Pi hosted template, most of the templates that we have in there, or almost all, have the configuration stored at a specific location where I can just copy over and I restore all my data without having to lose anything, even though I'm migrating to different architectures. That's basically the rundown of what we're doing. Now I'm gonna close all this out and I'm gonna use Guacamole as a perfect example. And here I'm gonna create a brand new Docker. Well, I'm gonna create a brand new container and I am gonna call this uh, I'm gonna start off with 201, and we're gonna call this Docker LXC, and I'll make a password for root, and then I'm gonna go next. For the template-wise, I am gonna do Debian 12. We're gonna run this on the storage local disk. Uh, we're gonna run this off local VM, and we could use eight gigs of space. 32 is fine too. You don't need that much space for this. You could always expand it. Uh, cores, I'm gonna give it one. Memory, you don't really need too much, but I could do 1024, give it one gig of RAM, 1024 and one gig of swap. Next, I'm gonna head over to network, DHCP. And this is the point where I, if you have something set up like I did with the OpenWRT, you could always choose uh, the OpenWRT option or you could choose regular network option. For me, I'm gonna choose regular network, go into DNS settings, I don't have to worry about that, and then confirm on this. And this is gonna create my Debian 12. It should take, like I said, a few seconds, especially I'm running this on my i9 machine, which is the i9 mini PC. It runs great. It's got uh, eight cores. 
and it's i9 11 gen 2.5 it's it's a really good mini pc to run um little servers like this all right so now that i have my docker all set up i'm gonna start this up and we are gonna use the get docker script or if you want you can go over to pyhost.com and run my script as well that will create all the folders that you need for portainer but in my case i'm just gonna run this like i would normal on a fresh brand new install so i'm gonna go to get docker this is the script itself and here's the little code you can actually find in the script so i'm gonna do this curl x, and i'm just gonna paste this right into this command prompt oh i don't even have curl installed app install curl if i could type app install curl apt update apt install curl now uh, this is more of a raw cut i'm not really going to edit these things out all right uh, let's grab this and we can run sh install docker and since we're running root already we don't have to really worry about passwords and stuff and this will take only like about a minute or two now while i am loading this up let's talk about my sponsor and today's sponsor is pcbway now if you're looking for manufacturing purposes or to sell products that you have made either through 3d printing or pcbs uh, look no further than PCB Wave. You can simply go on their website and get an instant quote to see what you need. They also have advanced technology that will make your products perfect every time. So not only do they support PCBs, they also have SLA printing, filament printing, injection molding, a bunch of stuff that you need to get your project off the ground. Best of all, right now, they do have free shipping. So if you are looking into expanding your products, look no further than PCB Way. Now back to the video. All right, so now that Docker is installed, we should be able to run it. I might have to reboot this. Let's see, Docker, it works, so I don't have to actually worry about this. I, I think the only time I have to restart this or uh, log out and log back is, is when I have a user and I need to add the Docker group to the user. But for now, we're good. Uh, what we're gonna do next is actually transfer over some data so we have the information that we need. So my original portainer, which runs ARM, uh, is on 93, so I'm gonna pop over there. And here we are, we are in the, uh, my arm, uh, uname, uname-a, and you could see right over here is ARC64, uh, so it's arm64. And if I list out my structure, I have some stuff going on in here, but let's go over to our portainer folder. So it's in files, app data, and then I think it's config, there you go. Now I do have guacamole one and guacamole because i was testing some stuff but this is the actual information that i need which is guacamole so how i'm going to transfer files at this point is basically scp over the information um the easiest way for me because i don't have anything up and installed so i'm just going to do nano etc ssh and then sshd underscore config. And in here, I am actually gonna allow for, I'm not planning to create a user. So I'm gonna allow root login and I'm gonna do yes. And I'm gonna do system CTL restart sshd.service. And that should be good. Let's see if I could SSH into this right now with the root. So let's SSH. Oh, first we need to grab the IP. Dash A. And 241. Okay. SSH root at 192.168.105.241. Yes. And let's see. Oh, it works. Perfect. I could exit that because I don't need that. So now I am going to do something called SCP dash R uh, guacamole slash star um and then we're gonna go do root at 192.168.105.241 and we're gonna put colon slash root slash guac i'm just gonna change the name of the folder and let's see there is no folder there let's make one ls make der guac and let's try that again oh it's permission denied because I'm not running sudo. So let's do that again with sudo. Yes. And there we go. So this is a very raw cut of me just figuring out stuff and working as I go along the way. Most of the time when I run this, I, it's a little bit more fine tuned. I know where the mistakes are going to happen and stuff like that. And I've organized my thoughts. But 
I'm just doing this without having any transcripts or anything. I'm just going through it. So you could see like I would make mistakes and then make a folder here, go back in there, do this and do that. And then now I have what I need, which is guac. Now this folder contains all the information that this guacamole has. And now I could install my Docker. Now the Docker that I need is uh, guacamole, which is right here. I'm going to remember these names. And we're going to do a docker run dash d and we're going to name this guac so I know what it is. We're going to do port and I know it's 8080 so we're going to do 8080 and we're going to do dash volume and our volume where we save the data is going to be in root slash guac colon and then slash config. How do I know all this? It's because when I go into FL containers, it actually has all this information right here. So that's what I'm just grabbing and changing up or doing whatever I need to do. So now we got that. Now we just have to paste this in there and make sure I am grabbing latest. And here we are installing the Docker with the commands that we need. And once this starts up, it should have my original data in there. But now instead of running it on ARM64, it's running on AMD64. Now again, if I go back into this, because I have so many things installed and they're all saved in these config folders, I could do the same step over and over again and then get all the stuff migrated over if I need to, or at least the stuff that requires a lot of CPU. So now that we know that it's installed, we could run docker ps and it's up for 18 seconds. The name is guac and the port is 8080. And again, I remember this is... Um, 241. So let's test this out. 192, 168, now 105, 241, 8080. There we go. We should have our original username and password, and we have all our connections saved. And now if I run Tiny11, there we have it. Everything is working. It's much smoother than when it's running off the Raspberry Pi, and everything's installed just like that. Now, if you want to use Portainer, because I do have AMD64 Portainer template, uh, we can do so. We could just head over to our Portainer, go back to home. Actually, we don't even need to go to home. Just go to environments, add an environment. And in here, we have a Docker standalone or whatever versions you have. We're going to do Docker standalone, start wizard. And here we have the actual script that we could run to get Portainer agent to work without having to actually open the API or anything or even install Portainer itself. We just need the agent. So if I go over here, head back into my VM over here, clear that screen. You see how I could paste that? It's just going to install the Portainer agent. And now if I go to Docker PS, I have that agent up and running. The port is 9001. I'll head back into my Portainer, call this Docker lxc and the environment address is 192.168.105.241 and it's 9001 port 9001 connect successfully connected and if i head back to home now i have three connections here well one is for my nas one is for the 64 and now i have one that's called docker lxc i could do live connect and it's going to show two containers one which is our guac and the other one is our Portainer agent. And I don't even have to run the full-fledged Portainer in this setup. And I could still control everything I need. Just remember, if you go into uh, using this, make sure you change this to AMD64. And then when you install whatever application you need, uh, it will be a part of AMD64. And if I go to App Templates, I have just as much apps as I do in ARM64. And there we have it. We have everything set up. Now it's just a tedious process of me migrating the stuff I want over to a stronger PC. Um, this way I won't have any problems. And it leaves me a lot more overhead to play around with my Raspberry Pi so I could run the lower end tasks without having to have the CPU struggle all the time. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I know it's a quick and dirty video of how I'm just migrating this stuff over. If you guys have any questions about this or know a better technique, let me know down in the comments below. But this is the best way that I could find to change from ARM64 to AMD64. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.